everyone welcome to Marika Creations today I'm turning fall into Christmas I have four DIYs for you and with each of my creations you can use them in a fall decor and in a Christmas decor you will see what I mean in just a moment so stay tuned for this For my first DIY, I will make some cute little wooden houses using this old scrap piece of wood that I found in our garage. I will just cut them to size and uh, have that roof shape. I just try to find an angle that I am pleased with. I will have two different angles on the two houses that I'm going to make and two different heights as well. So I just go to my mitre saw and cut them out. Then I take my electric sander and sand them off all the way around, back and front, edges, everything. They are very dirty, very old looking, but I love to find that good old wood underneath all that dirt looking good already I think and this is how they look looking good as is but I will now paint them in a white color I think it's a matte color and I only do one coat cover the whole piece It doesn't need to be perfect, even the one coat, because in the end I will heavily distress them. This video is part of the Flipping for Fall challenge hosted by Chantelle at Crafty Hints and her co-hosts are Brenda at Rustic and Lace DIY and Amanda at Six Kids and the Glue Gun. Links you will find them in my description to their channels as well as a link to the playlist of this challenge for more inspiration. After they have dried I sand them off gently and then I will take these printouts. I have mirrored the text and I will put them on like so with some Mod Podge and let them sit overnight to dry. The text I have chosen, you won't really see it at the end. You will see why a little later on. Nevertheless, I have chosen a text that is typical for fall and typical for winter and Christmas. Once the, the text has dried and I remove the paper, the ink will hopefully stay on that wooden piece. And now for the smaller house, I will take this fall inspired napkin and decoupage it on there. Continue with the mud parch on top and just set it aside to dry. And on the other side, I will have also a decoupage, this beautiful Christmas napkin. Almost had it on the wrong side there. Did you notice? I saved that one and uh, mod podged it, cut off the excess and set it aside to dry. And once dried, I go in with my sanding block and sanding the edges so all the excess napkin can be removed. All my creations today will be pieces that you can easily turn from fall decor to winter and Christmas decor. I like these small houses for example, you just turn them and on one side it's fall and the other is Christmas. Now I keep on sanding to get that really really distressed look 
just removing more of the napkin and more of the white paint to reveal the wood underneath. Now I'm on to my texts and I'm taking a damp sponge and gently rub on that paper to remove layer by layer of the paper. As I said, gently because if you rub too much you will remove the text as well. So I go over them and over them until I am happy with the result and now I'm sanding this big house as well. Really distress it. On the fall side I have an English poem about fall and on the other side I have a Swedish poem about winter and Christmas. So now I'm taking a napkin with sunflowers on, taking a piece of it like that and put it over the text for fall, mud potching it and now you see why it will not matter really what it says. If I had a napkin with text on I would have chosen that one instead of uh, doing the printouts that I did that would have been easier but I didn't have that on hand so I did it my way. On the other side of the text I will have this Christmas napkin and you will see the text a little bit shining through but not really be able to read it. So it will be a nice touch I think to have that as a background. This little house is done so I'm putting on a second coat of Mod Podge. You will see the final reveal of all my creations today at the end of this video. The full decor together and then just easily swap it into Christmas winter decor. So stay tuned for that. For my second DIY I will take a piece of firewood, this one here, cut it to size and make one side for fall and one side for Christmas. I will just cut it straight to begin with like that and then I will measure how I want my roof to look like because this side will be a house this is how it looks once I have cut it out and on this side here I will make a Santa so I will send off this side here thoroughly and then the other side I will leave as is. I want it rough. So I start with my Santa and I will drill just a tiny bit, a little indent there so I can put a wooden bead easily there. More surface will touch that wooden bead and it will stay easier in place. Now I'm taking a piece of faux fur and will cut his beard to size. A little triangle at the top to fit around his nose. So a little hot glue in that indent that I made and put the bead into place and then the beard like so. Cute already. And the tiny pieces that I have cut off I will turn into his moustache. A white scrap piece of uh, fabric will be his hat. Just cut it into a triangle like this and then I will hot glue it into place. Just on this side though because the other side will be a house, does not need a hat. And 
I'm taking some brown faux fur to embellish the hat a little further. Now I'm working on the other side to create my little house and I have a scrap piece of a carpet uh, with this natural fibre carpet that I thought would be a nice roof. So I'm cutting two pieces to size, one on each side and just hot glue them into place like that. Now I'm taking a black sharpie and I'm writing my cozy home. I thought that would be a perfect text for fall, don't you think? A little bit of dry brushing on the edges and underneath that the roof with the black acrylic paint. And here I am hot gluing some full colored leaves into place. Beautiful and a sunflower like so. Dry brushing the sunflower as well. A little bit with the same black acrylic. And if that's it for this uh, creation, a better look at the end of the video, all creations together. For my third DIY, I will make a standing wreath using this uh, ring and this base. I don't know what it has been. Do you have a clue? For me, it will be a, a base for my wreath form to stand on like that. But first I need to cut out a bit of that base to make it a nice fit. And here it is. And that's what I did. Just cut it with my miter saw several times so it will stand more steady in that groove. But before I attach it, I will just sand it off because I had some old glue on it. So I just gave it a quick sanding by hand like that. And then I sanded off the base as well. I'm putting the pieces together using wood glue and then hot glue for that instant hold as well holding it in place wiping off the excess just make it nice and straight like that and set it aside to dry and once it has dried i go over it with a black satin color and I applied two coats. I start off with my full embellishment and I will make a messy bow by using some burlap ribbon and some gold ribbon and some thinner green ribbon just crisscrossing them like this and put them together with some jute twine oh i think i have some green yarn here ducktail all the ends except for the thinner green ribbon And 
just fluff it up, make it pretty, and then I will use this beautiful sunflower in the center and some sunflower leaves around it, like so. And those long green ribbons, I will curl them, make my Marika curl, just hot glue them into place, just swirl them and glue them into place, every one of them. And the last touch will be this beautiful dragonfly and I will spray paint it in a gold color. Some more burlap ribbon. Attach the dragonfly with some hot glue. And then on the back I will attach a piece of velcro in order for it to sit on the wreath and I can swiftly change it to another wreath embellishment like this one for winter and Christmas. So I am attaching some Christmas pics like this and then when I'm happy with the shape I will put on some ribbon, some braided burlap ribbon like that and make a cute little bow. And then another one just like it, but with this velvet burgundy ribbon. If you're new to my channel, hi! I am Marika and on this channel I do lots of DIYs, thrift flips, trash to treasure, renovation of my home, some pottery, some painting, anything creative really. Please join me! Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join my YouTube family. I'm attaching a piece of Velcro on this one as well, just with some hot glue. I thought this winter scenery was missing something, so I decided to make a little pine cone gnome. And I put it on a wood round and cut it in the middle so it will sit on that base. So I'm attaching a tiny wood bead and cut out a tiny bead for my pine cone gnome. A tiny piece of faux fur makes a cute little hat for my gnome. I embellish the hat with some tiny tiny Christmas greenery and a golden pine cone. For my fourth and final DIY, I will make a double-sided sock gnome. I have already made this one on a live over at Connie's Creative Creations just a couple of days ago. I will leave a link down in my description to this video so you can check that out. So on the other side of this gnome, I will make a winter gnome. I attach some wood rounds as feet and a wooden bead as is the nose. I take some white faux fur for the beard of my gnome. And then right about here, my battery failed and I did not notice. So I will quickly show you what I did. You know how to make a gnome. So here it is already. I have some faux fur that I just put on as a hat just halfway as you can see and embellished it on the same side as the sunflower on the other side with some Christmas greenery. So full gnome with a yellow bead 
and a sunflower and you turn it and you have my winter Christmas snow. Et voila! Here are my fall decor pieces. Looking stunning, I think. I am happy with the result. My cozy home and the wreath. Looking pretty, I think. I love it. My sock gnome. Looking so cute. And my rustic wooden houses. Can you see the text a little bit? And I put a sunflower on the other one as well, off camera. What do you think? And then you can just turn them around, change out the greenery on the wreath, and we have Christmas and winter. Beautiful, I think. Tell me, what do you think of my creations today? Did you have a favorite? A favorite creation or a favorite uh, a vignette maybe? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video and videos like this, hit that like button and the subscribe button of course to support my channel so I can provide you with even more inspirational content. Now it's time to head on over to my description and hit the link to the playlist of this challenge for more inspiration. Just click and enjoy. Thank you so very much for watching. See you soon again in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye.